Are you struggling with feeling stuck in your life journey? Does it seem as if the challenges or conflicts that you keep experiencing are on repeat? Healing through feeling could be your new way through to a more satisfying life. Now, here is the host of the Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols show, licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols. Welcome everyone to today's show of the Feel to Heal show with myself, Sharon Nichols on the Incredible Inspired Choices Network. Today, I'm going to be doing a little bit different meditation to start off with because this one is going to require you holding down your nostril and then breathing. So there was going to be some silences, although I will do some talking in between so you can hear. However, I really want you to be focusing on your breath. And then I'm going to answer questions, these burning questions that you have had over the past couple of months on all of my different shows. And I'm really excited to go just a little bit deeper with some of them or re-explain, re-explore. It's just going to be a really fun show. So (sighs) breathing, always breathing, because, you know, it's the only thing we really have to do every single moment of every single day is breathing. And it always can bring you back to center, can always bring you back to, to the present. Two of the oldest healing modalities that we have on the planet are breath and sound. Millenniums, we have been using them to heal and therefore then heal our feelings, to heal how we are, just to to heal ourselves. It's about honoring yourself. So since I am a certified Kundalini yoga instructor, teacher, we won't even go anywhere near that. Although I have this incredible mantra, mudra that I want us to do. It's called dealing with your own mind. So sit up as straight as you can. If you can sit in easy pose, which is just with your legs crossed, um, that's fine. Or just with your spine straight. So you want to close off your right nostril with your right thumb. So right thumb, right, right nostril. And then you want to inhale deeply through your left nostril. I'm sorry. And yes, inhale deeply through your left nostril, and then you're going to exhale throughout your mouth. So And if you can, allow your eyes to close and just keep repeating this. The mind is a link between infinity infinity and you. When the soul gets into the body, the soul asked God, higher power, the universe, whatever your definition is or whatever your word is, what is my link with my Lord? And then God said, the mind. The mind can take you into any thoughts, beyond thought, and into infinity. Keep breathing. Mind can take you into any dungeon, any pit, and any negativity. The mind has no limit in its own self, but the, mi- but the mind is your servant. If the mind becomes your master, then you don't have a chance. It is very essential in yoga that we know our own mind. 
Keep breathing. Now, you will ask me if your mind can be controlled. Yes, not only can your mind be controlled, your life can be controlled. A situation can be controlled. Sometimes you get into very, very, very ugly situations. If you have the practice to switch your breath to the left nostril, you, will get, you can get out of it in two seconds. This is all according to Yogi Bhajan. The moment you start breathing with your left nostril, your elementary self will come into play. The moment your ele elementary self comes into play, your totality of the mind becomes one unit to confirm and it puts the radiance shield of your body and you will immediately become very pleasant and positive rather than angry and reactive. Keep breathing. Some people train themselves to breathe through any nostril they choose. But many of you have not practiced that and therefore, you use your hand to close your right nostril. Long, deep breathing through the left nostril is good for the heart and good for your health. It will calm you down. So normally, after you've done this for two minutes, which we have, you can start feeling very bored. That's your negative mind in action. What are you doing this for? This is so babyish. We could have done something better. Keep breathing. In any exercise which touches the mind, you may start getting upset in exactly two and a half minutes. That's the rule of thumb. The mind doesn't want to be caught. It wants to swing. But there are some people like most of us who feel that it's hard work to control the mind. But once we control the mind, then we can control the whole world. So let's inhale, removing your thumb from your nose, exhaling. And bringing yourself back to center. How are you feeling? Are you feeling as though you have a little bit more control? It's really what Feel to Heal has been all about. It's about bringing you to the present and allowing yourself to have your feelings and knowing that there are so many different things that you can do for yourself to calm, take a breath before speaking so you can ride your wave. So let, now let's all receive one more breath together. Thank you. I hope that this was helpful. I do. I realized all of a sudden the other day that I do this breath without even thinking about it. And it has been so helpful. I do it a lot when I'm driving. And so I wanted to share it with all of you since today's topic is not any one specific thing that I feel as though I need to open or allow or you know, bring open you up and then, then close something. So this was just another tool to put in your toolbox to help you bring yourself back to the present. So our first question today, 
all these questions came from all different people, although the bulk of them came from one person who I had asked very early on to give me feedback. So I just want to say thank you so much. You know who you are. I really appreciate it. I've appreciated all of the feedback that you have given me and all of the likes and I'm welcoming, like I've said in the very beginning, constructive criticism. It's the way that I know I can grow and I can always improve. And I wanna give you all the, the best quality content and, and, and product that I, that I can, because I am, I am the, the tool with which I keep wanting to sharpen and do better. So today's first question came from out of the loss and grief, the, the, the show that I did on loss and grief. And so the first question is, how do I deal with loss 25 years after the fact when there are still so many triggers? Well, I don't know if you can, if you recall, although in talking about grief and loss, Yes, it happens once, you know, that's when the shock initially happens, and then you can go through all five stages, although at any point in time, you can go back to the first stage, which is shock, then the second, third, and fourth usually are anger, sadness, and the bargaining, the what ifs, and then the fifth one is acceptance, and you can go in and out of them, and for, you know, and be in them for the, the shortest, the longest. I mean, you can wake up and be in, be in shock about a loss that you did have 25 years ago. So if you are triggered, what, what's the first thing to do? What do you think the first thing I'm going to say is receive a breath, allow yourself to feel your feelings. And then the biggest thing, the biggest thing after that is Notice the stage that you are in. Acknowledge where you are. It's okay that, the, that these memories are coming up for you. And also the best thing you can do is have a plan. When you do, when it does come up after 25 years, have a plan. I've had multiple conversations with friends and family members who have lost people years and years and years ago. And just be open to having a conversation, allow, you know, call up a friend and say, you know what, I'm feeling really sad today because of something that happened 25 years ago. Do you have a minute so I can just process it? Of course, there's always some grounding exercises that you can do, recognizing, celebrating, breathing, put on a song, again, Breath and sound are the two is olding healing modalities. So again, I know I'm repeating, I apologize. I just really want to drive that point home that you have so much more control than you think you do out there. It is so, it is, there's so much available to you in order for you to heal yourself. You are listening to the Feel to Heal show with myself, Sharon Nichols, and we are going to take our first break, and I look forward to you all coming back so I can answer some more questions, and we'll be right back. At different times on our life journey, we can feel stuck and struggle with seeing our way through. What if the answer to the struggle is just to go deeper than the surface? By tuning in to Feel to Heal with the Sharon Nichols show, with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols, you'll receive insight and guidance on exploring your feelings in order to heal yourself. Are you ready to create a more satisfying, peaceful, and successful life? Listen for the Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols show every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Mountain, and 3 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. 
professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also ask questions or comments by email by sending to Sharon Nichols at feeltoheal.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back. I'm so excited that you are here. I, I'm, some of you, I hope, are watching me on video, although those of you who are listening, I have to let you know that I dance on all of the commercial breaks because it just really it brings up my it brings up my mood it's listening to the to the music of my my intro and my extra and then the the music behind all of the commercials it just makes me it just it it helps me be present because it's so important that during these shows for myself that I am present otherwise there's really no point at least for me. So the next question is how to deal, how should I deal with not being where I thought I would be? So how to, how to deal with not being where you thought you would be? I think you have an idea of where I'm going to go with this. Being present in the present moment in the here and now means that we are aware and mindful of what is happening at this very moment. So it's not about worrying about the past, sorry, being stuck in the past, being sad about it, or worrying about the future. I love when I combine the two. It's truly about being present because that's how you deal with, with being, with not being where you thought you should be. First and foremost, actually, you should stop shooting on yourself because you are exactly where you are supposed to be because this is where you are. I know it sounds so simple and yet it is just that so simple. And we put so much weight on, on all of our failures, on all of the things that we didn't do. And let's focus on all the things that we have done, not from an egotistical point of view, just from a place of allowing yourself to actually be you and with all of your incredibleness and then all of your shortcomings. It's sort of like the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, I am 100%. The other 20%, I allow myself to be human. I allow myself to make honest mistakes. I allow myself to beat myself up and be mean in the moment because that's also one of the things that I use to drive me forward. It keeps me keep, keep wanting to do better and improve and be the best version of Sharon that I can possibly be. So being present is without time. It is the bridge between the past and the future because Everything happens in the here and now. I mean, there isn't anything that I could be doing right now other than talking to you because I'm being recorded. So I might as well be present. Me thinking about what I'm going to be doing after the show is not going to serve me or me worrying about something that's going to happen or me focusing on, on the past or what I did just before leading up to now, again, not going to serve me must be present because otherwise I won't make any sense. Next question. How do I stop repeating the same mistakes? Well, literally stop it. Be present, be aware of what you are doing. Stop with that grasping energy. It's the pain pushes until the vision pulls. Michael Beckwith said that 
And I know I quoted that in one of my shows. And that's actually been one of my mantras. I, I have found myself in so much psychic pain and then probably even physical pain if I really think about it because nervousness can cause nausea and then sadness can cause just a heavy heart. So just chest pain, although it's not physical, it's more mental, even though of course it's physical because it's happening in the body. It's just allowing yourself to be you. It's not about chasing and, and it's not about chasing and looking and trying to get. It's that grasping, trying to get, 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 get. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? It still keeps you stuck in that, that victim. It's also about looking for where you are meeting yourself, where you are actually the winds. Start looking for all of it. We always have a point to prove. And it's just as easy to find to find the points to prove you're good rather than find, finding the points to prove you're bad or right or wrong or whatever it is that is on, you know, the, your polar opposites on your own spectrum. Look for the positive evidence. It's there. Just have to look for it. And yes, I know it's so much easier to come up with the negative, although that's where the choice always is. Another question I received, how do I accept rejection? <sighs> Heavy sigh, says me. It is hard to be rejected. We just want to be liked and loved. That is our ultimate goal, or at least that's what we think it is. And it is sort of our, our basic human right is to be loved, to be cherished, to be wanted. Although you have to and yes, I'm having to, you have to be open to the possibility that you're not for everybody. So that being said, when you are rejected, take some, do some self-care, take some time to process your emotions and your thoughts and your feelings, and then be kind to yourself. There's no point in beating yourself up it's just a waste of time and energy. So that leads into how do I stop taking things so personally? It's really important that you set clear and measurable standards for yourself, and then you must keep them. So you must keep your word with yourself. I mean, I know it's really easy and we're the first ones to not keep words with our own words with ourselves. So pretend that it's somebody outside of you that you're doing this for or get an accountability buddy. That's one of the things that I know you've heard bandied about on the, an accountability buddy that if you need to keep, keep accountable to them, then maybe just maybe you'll start to sort of use them in a positive way to keep yourself on track. Be compassionate with yourself. So once you have set the high standards and you've met them or haven't met them, accept the fact that you are doing your best because you can always, as long as you are doing your best, then no one can ask, especially you, any more for yourself. Please do not allow yourself to go off in, in another direction and start shooting. Set, the, set a standard, keep it, and that's okay. It's the baby steps. So it's not like, you know, I, what I've always said to my, my children, at the beginning of the school year, you're, you're not supposed to know the information. That's why you're in school. So the first semester of a year-long class or the first, we'll go with the first half of a semester, is it's the learning. It's okay to not get an A on your first test. It's about you learning how the 
professor or the teacher is actually giving you the information and then how they're going to test you on it. It's okay if you don't do well on your first paper. It's then about going back and learning or asking the question, what could I have done differently in order to achieve your goal of success, of succeeding, of getting the A, so you can, of course, feel good about yourself. And so in the end, that's, the, that's actually when, when you achieve the goal. So if your goal is to get an A in the class, do what you can, of course, all along to do that. Although don't beat yourself up if you don't get it in the beginning. That's why you're here to learn. So also remember not to make everything about you. Expand your perspective and look at what is happening perhaps from someone else's perspective. So ask yourself, what else could this mean? Meaning, what, what needs to happen in order for me to fix this problem or this issue? Is it really truly about me? Do I need to make a course correction so things can go easier for myself and perhaps the other? When, of course, when it's appropriate, simply ask, what do you mean? Because making an assumption is a sure way to create even more misunderstandings and conflict. So when in doubt, just ask, what do you mean? And don't do it through text because texting loses so much of the tone of with which you are asking the question. I know I've said, and I will repeat again and again, my children know that when I put a heart after the question, that it's not coming from the mean mommy place. It's not coming from, you've done something wrong and I need you to answer this question, why? It's all about coming from a place of love. And that's always what it is. And that's the tone that you want to have with yourself first. Taking a breath. Always, always breathing. So I have a bunch of other questions that may take a minute or two. So from the fear show, what is fear? Fear is a natural, powerful, and primitive human emotion. It involves a universal, see, here's the thing. It's a biochemical response as well as an individual emotional response. So you've got a physical and then you also have the mind. So which came first, the chicken or the egg? It doesn't matter. It's about bringing it, bringing it to yourself. So you bringing it in to yourself, receiving a breath so you can discern whether it's actually in your mind or whether it's actually in your body. I'm going to say that if it's in your body, then it's real and, and, and physical. And that's when the fight or flight definitely needs to come in to, it needs to come into, to practice, if you will. Well, that's what you need to do. If you need to run, run. If it's in your head, take a moment to really discern. Are you afraid that you're going to be vulnerable? Are you afraid that someone is going to think a certain way about you? Because it's just a thought. You don't always have to act on them. So when we come back from our next break, we're going to answer some more questions. And you are listening to the Feel to Heal show with myself, Sharon Nichols, on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. At different times on our life journey, we can feel stuck and struggle with seeing our way through. What if the answer to the struggle is just to go deeper than the surface? By tuning in to Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show, with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols, you'll receive insight and guidance on exploring your feelings in order to heal yourself. Are you ready to create a more satisfying, peaceful, and successful life? 
Listen for the Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols show every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Mountain, and 3 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also ask questions or comments by email by sending to Sharon Nichols at FeelToHeal.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, and thank you for listening to myself, Sharon Nichols, and the Feel to Heal show on Inspired Choices Network. And please reach out to me through in the chat room or through my website, feeltoheal.com, and or Sharon Nichols at feeltoheal.com is my email. And I am a licensed and marriage family therapist, as I'm sure you've heard multiple times, life guide. And I help individuals and couples who are experiencing difficulties in communicating. They're not meeting each other, not hearing, not getting, not feeling heard. And so therefore, then there's a lot of breakdown. And I help provide or create win-win situations and solutions so everyone can live a satisfying, peaceful, and successful life. So please reach out if you have any questions or if you think that I can help you in any way. I've been doing this for over 25 years and it is my jam. I really enjoy just talking and listening and just being there, being a sounding board for, for others. So one of the questions that came up was, how do I break up with a friend? And I thought that was very interesting because it wasn't one of the questions that I had that I had even, it wasn't one of the things that I actually even talked about in, in my show. However, sounded like a really, it was a really great follow-up question. So don't, these are the things, there's two things not to do if you want to break up with a friend, because this is coming out of having a hard conversation show. Sorry. I, it's, I'm all, I, bring me back, receiving a breath. So don't ghost your friend. Don't cut, cut them off. Don't pretend that there's nothing going on. Don't act in a way. Do it with your own with your own respect, how you would respect yourself. So therefore then respect the other person. I know sometimes it's just so much easier to avoid because again, you don't want to have the hard conversation. You don't want to have to tell somebody that they're actually not meeting your needs. And then the other thing is don't lay all of the blame on them. It's impossible. It's always two people having two people in a relationship. So, so even if they did something that was really, really hurtful or just something that's not in alignment with your morals and values anymore, because you have grown and changed, it's about not blaming them because you still have to have some, some 10% even out of the hundred. And therefore it's about taking responsibility for your part always. So here are some things that you can do. Take a break from a relationship to clear your thoughts. 
it's okay. You can also find some support from others who are going through a similar thing. Also, if you're going to have a conversation, use your I statements. I'm feeling this way. It also may be helpful to journal, write down how you're feeling so you can actually have a clear and, and concise idea of what's really going on because you're going to have your thoughts and then you're going to have your feelings and so it's about finding that it's about riding the wave so you can have clarity and then share that clarity so the end of a relationship is not necessarily a a a, a bad thing so if the friendship is not nurturing or working it's okay to break up with a friend to give yourself some freedom for you to take care of yourself and, and just being more, more positive. Here's the other thing that I forgot to mention that's really important. If this in any way, if the relationship is abusive, both emotionally or verbally or even physically, definitely take, take your responsibility for your part which is just how you even said yes to, to it in the first place, and then extricate yourself. And you can also say, you know what? This is not healthy for me. This is not safe for me. I don't feel safe being in any type of relationship with you because I'm constantly feeling a certain way and taking responsibility for how you feel, not blaming the other person, taking responsibility for how you feel. Part of this, part another, another offshoot of this is how do I explain to people that I'm not looking for advice, just someone to listen. So Alison Armstrong said this the best when I took her, her workshop on celebrating men, satisfying women, because we as women, sometimes just need to dump. Sometimes we need, sometimes we just need a bucket to dump into. And sometimes she said, we need either a towel or a blanket to lay everything out on. So then we can pick out what we actually want to then talk about. And I have been using this, this idea, this theory, this technology, if you will, for years, because I will now call a friend and say, you know what, I just need to dump or I'm not sure what part of it here I need to expand upon. Or can you, you know, these are the things. And now what do you think? So there's three different things going on. And so please know that, please just call a friend and say, you know what? I'm just, be, take it all back, rewind, bring it back. Before you get on the phone, as soon as you get on the phone with a friend or even in an email, say, I'm, this is just for dumping purposes. Thank you for listening. Or, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm not sure I'm, I'm having all these different thoughts and I'm not sure which thought is the one that I should focus on is the one that I should question or take a look at. And I, that's to me what therapy actually is. You know, when someone, when someone, when a client comes in, of course, we always start with the niceties. How are you? Well, how are you? Good. Okay. And then where, let's lay it out on the blanket. And then I will ask them sometimes what they think is most significant for them. And sometimes I will say, this is what I'm hearing because this is part of the theme of what you are talking about. And so it's, so it's about you sort of being your own therapist and you listening to what you are saying, because that is going to be the most helpful thing that you can do for yourself. Ride your wave, ride your emotional wave until you get to that moment of clarity. And there it is. There's that nugget. That's where then you get to go. So another question was about 
or actually some more clarification. Can I go over being selfish, self-care, and narcissistic? More narcissistic personality disorder, which, you know, someone who's a true narcissist or narcissistic personality disorder is really going to be the, be that person who is really so not happy with themselves and not able to actually show up in the way that they really truly want to because there is a mental deficiency. So selfish, self-care, and narcissistic. So it makes complete and total sense, I've said this before, that we are selfish with ourselves because we are the center of our own universe. We have to put on our own oxygen mask first. That can make us selfish because we feel as though we have to help everybody else before we can help ourselves. Although helping ourselves, we can then help everybody else. So we've got it all backwards because we were, I'm assuming, most of us were brought up to believe that give do unto others as we would like done unto ourselves. So therefore we give, 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 give with the expectation that everyone's going to give, give, give back to us. Although it doesn't always work that way. So ask yourself when you think someone else is selfish, is it possible that you are being selfish, wanting them to behave the same way that you want? Again, selfish is not about you putting yourself out there with it's it's a it's not about the expectation it's about i take it back selfish is the expectation that they are going to give back to you what you are giving to them it's not selfish if you are just giving without any expectation of getting self care We've been talking about this for years. Yes, it is very important for you to take care of yourself. Although self-care can become selfish when you're doing it to manipulate. <sighs> because it is important to recharge your batteries. Also, it's, not, it's also important to not come off as a martyr. So... Again, looking to create the win-win situation. So if you need help with something and then you're going, you say, you ask someone to do something, the no has to be also one of the answers. I think we, we, I used to, or up until now, I did a lot of asking of a question where the only answer was a yes. There was no answer for no. Because if someone said no, that they wouldn't do it, then I would take it personally. I would get very upset and I wouldn't be able to then focus. I would just took it all in as though it was all my, it was all my fault. And then I would get so frustrated that, that what I was asking wasn't going to be done. So therefore then I felt as though I wasn't being taken care of. And we've sort of tied that all in with it's that's supposed to look like self-care, asking somebody to do something for you. Again, that's the martyr part, because then I would be like, well, fine, I'll do it myself. And then there's no room in there for someone to actually show up and be your hero or do something for you coming from their heart rather than because of the expectation. So it's not it's about lowering your expectation, therefore then allowing there to be the opportunity for somebody to say no to your request. They're just saying no to your request. They're not saying no to you. So it's not about taking it personally. So when we come back from break, we're going to talk a little bit more about being narcissistic, and then we're going to answer some more questions. I hope everyone, I hope you're all finding this so helpful, because I have to say this was one of, one of the easiest and then therefore most fun shows for me to actually do, because 
I'm feeling as though I finally have something to respond to. So thank you so much. See you back in a minute or so. At different times on our life journey, we can feel stuck and struggle with seeing our way through. What if the answer to the struggle is just to go deeper than the surface? By tuning in to Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show, with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols, you'll receive insight and guidance on exploring your feelings in order to heal yourself. Are you ready to create a more satisfying, peaceful, and successful life? Listen for the Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Mountain, and 3 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also ask questions or comments by email by sending to Sharon Nichols at feeltoheal.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back. And thank you so much for listening to the Feel to Heal show with myself, Sharon Nichols on the Inspired Choices Network. And I've been answering your questions and so excited to do that. And so just before the break, we were talking about self-care, being selfish and being narcissistic. So going back to the narcissism thing, you know, this has been banting, bantied about that a lot of people have been called narcissistic because they've been sort of taking care of themselves. Except the most important thing to really know is that someone who is who does have narcissistic personality disorder is someone who has a con they need they've a excuse me, that a pervasive pattern of grandiosity, meaning that, that either in their fantasy or in behavior, a constant need for admiration, they have a lack of empathy. And then, and then they, beginning at an, an, by early adulthood and or present in a variety of contexts, they could possibly have a lot of these things, meaning five of these nine. So the, the sense of self-importance, they have preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success and power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love, a belief that they are special and unique and can only be understood by people who are also special and unique, a sense of entitlement, lack of empathy, and envy of others or a belief that others are envious of them. So really the most important thing to get out of to get out of this is that those with narcissistic personality disorder believe that they're superior to others and have little regard for other people's feelings although this is behind the mask of ultra confidence behind this mask of ultra confidence lies a fragile self-esteem and vulnerable to the slightest criticism. They feel they, this personality disorder causes people to be, to be misunderstood so much that they feel it's become such a defense mechanism. So it's so hard for them to feel superior all the time because they're also just so miserable. The major distinction between a narcissist or between the narcissist and the narcissistic personality disorder is that the narcissistic is not mentally ill. They do not have a personality order, personality disorder, and it's and they are most interested in gaining power, money, and prestige. So to many narcissists, too many narcissists succeed in their pursuits. And there's no need to worry about the self-esteem of a narcissist. They have an overabundance of it. So my, my good friend, psychologist Leslie Austin says, always remember, this is not about you. 
with the narcissist, even though it feels like it is. It's the narcissist is projecting onto you. Difference from the narcissistic personality disorder. They, they may be projecting, projecting onto you, although they are coming from a place of feeling miserable rather than coming from a place of, of grandiosity or they are the best. It's not egoic with, with a narcissistic personality disorder. Have empathy for them because how sad it is for them to live this way. And they are probably secretly terrified and need to have a sense of control no matter how illogical that is to you. And the most important thing is it's not personal, just not personal, not about you. It's not about you. So one more question going through my notes. Going through my notes. And I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing that I've gotten from listening, or from answering all these questions is about staying in the present moment because that's really the, what it is. So the overall theme to all these questions is why and how. Why do I do this? How do I stop it? Why, how? Why, how? And the why can keep you in the first stage of consciousness, it keeps you stuck for yourself being the victim, which I know ultimately is not where you want to be. Because if it was, you wouldn't be listening to the show. You wouldn't be listening or, or questioning or asking yourself, how do I not feel the way that I'm feeling? Because the pain pushes until the vision pulls. Because you are as as a victim you could be in so much pain for yourself in the moment so it's about breathing through it about letting go of the things that are holding you back it is about not being in your own way getting out of your own way and sometimes how is actually doing nothing I know that might sound a little counterintuitive, although doing nothing is doing something. The choice to do nothing is really, really, can be really, really important. So it's about being a human being, just being, not being a human doing. So it's about balance and it's about discernment. So yes, always question where you are, although take a breath before you respond. It's about not reacting in the exact moment that you have your first thought and feeling. You're going to have them. They're going to be there. It's about releasing and letting go. Being present-minded is important because it is the key to staying healthy and happy. It's the best way to combat anxiety and depression because if you're, you're not worrying about the future or thinking about the past, there is no time for either of them. If you just stay present, be present, breathe. Thank you so much for listening to today's show. Please, I, I'm going to be doing this show of answering questions in the, probably in another two, three months. So please share them with me. 
Next week's show is going to be all about enjoying the journey on the way to the on the way to the goal. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much. You're listening to Sharon Nichols on the field, the field to heal show on the, thank you for choosing to listen to the field to heal with Sharon Nichols show. Sharon Nichols will return next Monday at 6 PM. Eastern standard time, 5 PM central, 4 PM mountain and 3 PM Pacific on inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, give up the struggle, feel all you need to feel, and make this week your best one yet.